Graphene is a fascinating material. At first glance, you might think the structure of it would be simple. It's a single atom layer thick of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal structure, kind of like this chicken wire. However, previous research has found that it's not flat, but rather it's rippled or distorted. The wavelength of these ripples in graphene is a few nanometers to 25 nanometers, and their amplitude is about one nanometers. And they're really surprising because they have a high strain energy and they impact on the charge transport properties. Here at the University of Warwick, we've looked not at graphene, but at chemically modified graphene. We've looked at two forms of chemically modified graphene, graphene oxide and chemically reduced graphene oxide. These are two most widely studied forms of chemically modified graphene and have many applications ranging from composites, photovoltaics and sensors. The physical and chemical structures of chemically modified graphene is still not well understood. Despite being heavily oxidized and having a C2O ratio of roughly 2 to 1, graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide maintain large areas of graphene-like backbone. We made graphene oxide using modified Hummer's technique and reduce it using hydrazine in solution. TEM samples were then made by dropping a drop of graphene oxide or reduced graphene oxide solution on top of a lacy carbon TEM grid. This produces a good coverage of graphene oxide, much of which is single layer. When we look at these samples in TEM, we find that graphene oxide is nearly transparent and is robust to the electron beam. Electron diffraction shows a distinctive hexagonal structure. The inner spots are more intense than the outer ones. As we discuss in the paper, this is a distinctive signature of single layer graphene. We can learn more about the structure of a graphene-like sheet by using a electron diffraction. And in particular, we can learn more as we tilt the, uh, the sample in the microscope. The spots move as you tilt the sheet because the projected distance gets smaller as you tilt, and so the spots move out. But more interestingly for the roughness and the rippling in the sheet is how the spots disappear because the rippling in the sheet becomes much more apparent as you tilt it. So looking at the way that the spots broaden and disappear as you increase the tilt angle allows us to work out what the structure of the graphene sheet is. We find that the rate at which the spots broaden is actually greater for graphene oxide than was previously reported for graphene. And unlike graphene, the spots don't broaden linearly with tilt, but they rather go faster than linearly. In order to understand the broadening of the diffraction peaks with tilt angle, we considered theoretically various height modulations in the graphene sheets. Um, one way we can do this is by considering rather long range variations and then we can show theoretically that they would just lead to a broadening of the peaks. But if we consider short range variations at the atomistic sort of scale of graphene, we can find that this leads to um, side peaks appearing, new diffraction peaks appearing next to the standard peaks. And we've done that analytically, but we've also done that numerically. We have shown as a function of the tilt angle how the diffraction peak would vary and what we see in the upper row is what would happen if we had a few short range variations in the height. And you see besides the dominant lightly colored sort of main peak or yellow line, you see side peaks appearing at other positions. The second row shows that when we average over many such distortions, the net effect is a broadening of the single peak. This broadening is faster than linear as in the experiments and hence different from long-range distortions. So from our investigations, both AFM and electron diffraction clearly indicate that the topography of graphene oxide is different to that previously reported for graphene. The local strain induced by the functionalization causes short-range corrugations in the graphene-like lattice of the graphene oxide, and the magnitude of these distortions is about a tenth of the carbon-carbon bond spacing. Now, reduced graphene oxide appears to be similar and that's consistent with the observations that the conductivity of reduced graphene oxide is orders of magnitude lower than mechanically exfoliated graphene. The local strain will have important implications, both for the mechanical properties and for the chemical reactivity.